natural man or a man of the flesh who has not been birthed by the Holy Spirit thinks that material objects of this world are blessings. He holds to the doctrines of men rather than being guided by the Holy Spirit into all truth. This lesson is about spiritual blessings and is based on two recent comments posted on the YouTube page. The first is obviously from a thoughtful gentleman whose comments are encouraging about the content being produced in these lessons as well as being aware of the economics of what it takes to put these online. Let's read from James Sunshine one week ago. Thank you for your efforts and expense to put these truths together so that I can be edified with the truth. Thank you, James. This is very much appreciated as the startup costs for this ministry came out of my back pocket. And this building took me more than two years to build. Now let's move on to the lesson. When you have come to the knowledge that predestination, election, and the sovereignty of God are true, that Christmas, Easter, and all the other supposed holy days are of pagan origin, and also that free will, or what is called accept Christ, along with eating some cracker and drinking some grape juice, are all lies as a means of salvation, then you want to share this knowledge. After a while, you kind of figure out that the world, what the world is about. Let's read what the, how the Bible states that in 1 John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The natural man of this world doesn't want anything to do with the truth of God's word. How can a statement like that be made? In John 3, 19, the scripture states, And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Men that have been born of the Holy Spirit are to walk in the light of his word, are we not? Romans 12 and 2 states, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our job is just like Peter's when Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. If we love him, if we agape him, if we walk after his commandments, then this is our job as mature believers. So where do our spiritual blessings come from and what are they? Let's turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, and start finding out. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. First off, this is written to his predestinated elect, isn't it? The natural man or the man of the flesh 
hates even the word predestination. Most act as if they want to spit it out like it's a dirty word. They want to believe in their rituals and traditions for salvation, and they were made to think this way. This is also why they have never been born again. The word again in the Greek is the word anothen, and it means from above or by the Holy Spirit. John 6.63 says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If the Lord has given you the ability to understand and believe these words, then he has started you walking with him in the narrow way to a spiritual life and hopefully to continue in this walk. It is not easy. You can check out the lesson on the parable of the sower to get deeper into the study. How then are we spiritually blessed? Let's look at what the Bible says in Luke 6. And yes, this is part of the Beatitudes, which is also in Matthew 5. We're just going to touch lightly on this and start reading in verse 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Didn't they kill Jesus for his words? Yes. He was God in the flesh, wasn't he? He was the epitome of righteousness, wasn't he? A baby believer, or one who has just come to the knowledge of the truth, hasn't gained the knowledge in the scripture yet to get to this point of being hated. But they know they have been looking for something. They're hungry for something. What are we to hunger for? Matthew 5 and 6 states, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Why would we weep? Several reasons, but right off the bat, it's for our sins. The Lord has opened our eyes to our sins. This is why he says in Luke 13, 3 and 5, But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And in Romans, the second chapter, the, the scripture states, It is the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. This is another spiritual blessing in that he has allowed us to repent of the sins of our outer man and deny self. As we grow in knowledge, we start to give out the gospel. Most people can't handle rejection, even though it's part of the spiritual blessings. The word reproach, and back in Luke 6.22, in the Greek, is the word anadizo. This word means to defame or taunt. You, on your part, are trying to give out God's word, his favor. And they take it and say no. They would rather have their rituals and traditions because they have not been born again, and therefore they have no inner man. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, states that how not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. They think they are good if they have a lot of money or things and stuff. They don't want to or need correction. Doesn't the scripture say he chastens and scourges every son he receives? What does the Lord usually correct us with? Let's read Psalm 17 and start reading in verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world. They can't hear spiritually because God has not given them the hearing ear nor the seeing eye. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. In Galatians 4, Paul says the same thing. And let's start reading in verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born of the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. So what do we do about this? How do we handle this as believers? Sometimes our outer man wants revenge when someone does something or says something derogatory to us. But that is not what we are called into. We are called and chosen to live righteously and godly. Let's move on to see how we handle this as believers in Romans 12. Let's start reading in verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. 
Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. How are we to feed him? Doesn't the scripture stay in John 6, 55, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed? The word indeed in the Greek is alethos, and it means of truth. Feed him truth. Give out the truth of God's word whenever possible. If God wants someone, don't you think he knew them before the foundation of the world and then has planned on you being in that exact spot to give him the truth? Feed my sheep, remember? Or conversely, if someone rejects the word, which is more often than not, then that is what the Lord has planned as well. How many times are we supposed to witness to someone? Let's turn over to Titus, the third chapter, and read, starting in verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. The word heretic in the Greek is heretikos and means to choose for oneself. It also means schismatic, a follower of false doctrine. He believes he can accept Christ or eat a cookie for salvation when the Bible says nothing of this kind. Now, it was mentioned earlier in the lesson we had two comments. The second is from what we just learned in Luke 6, probably a spiritual blessing, in that this guy doesn't like the lesson on the abomination of Easter. This is from a guy whose name is Peter T. Peter states, funny video, comical, angry man. He probably has never read the early church fathers. So we have three comments in one. Let's deal with these one at a time, shall we? Funny video and comical. Doesn't Luke 6.25 say, uh, Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep? Next comment. Angry man. Doesn't Ephesians 4.26 say, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Yes, it does. And the context of that passage from verse 14 on down is about the winds of false doctrine. Third comment, he probably has never read the early church fathers. Just for giggles, how much more authority can you get than the Bible itself? Irenaeus, Ignatius, and Polycarp were right with the scripture and didn't waver. Do you hold the church fathers like Tertullian of the Antinicene fathers to be above the authority of the Bible? In a lot of his writings, he was a whack job. Are you citing with these as examples, such as him, of what you call an authority? In any case, it is very well known that Easter and Christmas are pagan in origin. The Bible, which should be our only authority, and as the canon of Scripture says, they are abomination, and it forbids us to do them. Not that the King James is infallible, because it isn't. The interlinear Bible which has the original Greek and Hebrew, is the inspired word of God. The lesson Peter obviously objected to is instruction in righteousness and what to avoid like Easter. What does the scripture state about instruction? Proverbs 12 and 1 says, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. The Hebrew word for brutish is ba'ar, and the Strong's Concordance defines it as meaning stupid or a fool. So, Peter, it might be that the Lord will open your eyes and he will grant you repentance from a tone of your comment. If not, then this lesson will be counted as a second admonition to you and another spiritual blessing from the Lord by his hand for this ministry, and all the praise is his. Our spiritual riches can only come from God, not a tree or a rabbit. Part of what you have to go through is rejection from the world, but we are supposed to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus, are we not? 
we are to give our bodies a living sacrifice daily, putting off the old man with his lusts and putting on the new inner man of righteousness and godliness should be our total focus. We are not to have fellowship with, with unfruitful works of darkness, such as Christmas and Easter, but rather reprove them. Walk in the Spirit, which is the truth. Study the Bible. Look up these definitions in the Strong's Concordance for starters. You are arming yourselves spiritually when you learn more about God's Word. Being guided by the Holy Spirit into all truth makes you stronger in your conviction for wanting to please Him and to be able to bear the fruit of the Spirit. We are to lose this life of self in this world to keep it unto life eternal. Losing the lust of the flesh and all that's in the world, like traditions of men, is gaining Christ by his new and better covenant, which does away with the Old Testament traditions that were of the flesh. Don't let them kill Christ in you, who is your hope of glory. You are going to run into heretics in this world that think they are godly, just like the Pharisees. But these evil men are the hand of God. Thank God for it because he is doing it for your good. This makes your faith in him stronger. He will repay and his wrath is upon them now, but they just can't see it because they are more than likely vessels of wrath and are spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind, but they will soon enough. Isaiah 48 and 22 states, There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Jesus told his disciples in John 14:27 which can be applied to us as a, his elect sheep of today. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let's end this with John 20 and 29, with where the scripture states, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Knowing that he, he only gives these blessings to his few elect is the highest honor and spiritual blessings that we could ever hope for no matter the cost.